Hey guys, okay, working on this uh, Caterpillar 301.8C. Uh, having an issue where the machine won't shut off when you turn the key off. Uh, so I'm gonna show you what might be going on with yours. I'll show you what's going on with mine. So I'll just start it here. Everything runs fine. Then when you want to go to shut it off, turn the key and nothing happens. So uh, basically that's back to on. I'm gonna turn it off here. And what's supposed to happen to shut it off is that solenoid is supposed to uh, electrically operate. Uh, so basically this is just a little electric 12 volt solenoid and it shuts the fuel off going to the engine. And that's what actually shuts the, the engine off uh, in this machine. So you've got, a, you've got a ground wire right here and then you've got a positive wire that goes over to a relay. So that positive wire goes over to your bank of relays right here. And the relay for the solenoid is, you can see it's labeled, it shows like a little solenoid going in and out there. Uh, it's this relay right here. So the first thing I would check is that, make sure it's good. Uh, you can just swap it out with like your horn relay or one of the other relays to see. I'd probably use the horn one. Uh, and then just see if that fixes your problem because sometimes these relays can burn out. However, in my case, the relay is fine. Um, and I have a bit of an issue further upstream, closer to the switch area and the control panel. So I'm gonna put that back in. And first, I guess I'll talk about uh, the wiring of this system. So uh, the way this relay is wired back here, I just wrote it on a piece of paper. So if, if you're looking at the relay and it's got the five spade terminals coming off the back, like every uh, relay does, so like this. One, two, three, four, five. So I just put them on that piece of paper. Um, the wiring that goes into them is uh, is like this. So you basically you have a positive, a larger positive wire that's always positive. It's always connected to that uh, to the uh, relay, uh, and then you have the solenoid wire. So that's the wire we just looked at at the back, the positive that goes on to the actual fuel shutoff solenoid. That's what that wire is connected to. And then you've got an always positive, just a smaller wire here. And this is the uh, positive that's always on that's actually powering the relay switch itself. And that actually on this machine is always positive. And then this one's not used for anything. And then this one is your negative uh, sort of control wire. So when this um, relay receives a negative signal, so negative battery or negative switch signal, um, from the computer, you could call it, it's not really a computer, it's a little sort of a circuit board, uh, a negative signal when you turn the key off, it activates this negative, uh, the solenoid uh, makes contact here and provides power to your solenoid to shut the fuel off. And the, you can't just, you could just put a negative to this and sort of bypass it. However, when you shut the key off, it does sort of a momentary a negative signal. So it'll apply negative to this for, it's like, I want to say five seconds, five to 10 seconds, and then it'll take that negative off. And in that time, it would have been enough time for the fuel to stop flowing and the engine to shut down. And then you'll see the solenoid in the back pop out again. Um, so in my case, the problem is a little bit more upstream. We'll get into that. Okay, so I'm over on the right-hand side of the machine here. And a lot of you will be familiar with this little control panel. It usually sits in this opening. It's easy to get to, you just take this cover off the bottom um, and basically so that signal wire this negative right here that I was talking about is actually so this harness comes from the machine is this blue wire right here it's uh, I think 532-88 but anyway it doesn't matter it's the blue one right here on the top corner of this connector and then it passes through this whole connector to this black wire here and then makes its way through and ends up being the this wire right here going into the into the housing so let me unplug that so i just unplugged it there everything oh everything's still in the same position so it was plugged in like that it's the top right hand corner wire. So this one right here. And so what I did was I applied negative voltage, which I can do right now. So 
So this is a power probe. All this does is apply positive or negative voltage as required. So I'll put negative to this and you'll hear the solid. So it goes, it thinks it's positive because the uh, inside the relay, it's actually, the, some of the positive current is making it through the relay, but I'll just apply negative to this. And you should be able to hear, let me turn this sound off. You should hear the relay, the fuel shutoff relay clicking. So we know our wiring relay and all that is good right up to this. So the problem is inside this control box and this control box is quite expensive. Probably I want to say 500 to a thousand dollars from Caterpillar. So we're going to get into this and see if there's anything we can repair uh, just at home. See this out, you see it's got these long pins. And you can see the one in question. So all these pins stick up into that plug. And this is an area for corrosion. And you can see the one that shuts it off is busted right off here. So what I'm gonna do is take this back in and we're gonna solder a new pin on and uh, that should fix the problem. Okay, so I thought it was recording there, but I just desoldered two of these pins. Um, they have a little bit of a shoulder on them. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and they're just soldered into holes on the board. So I took two of them out because one was corroded and the other one obviously is definitely broken right off. So I know I need to find a piece of metal that's similar in size to replace that with. Okay, so I've got this roll of 18 gauge solid copper wire. Uh, it's not ideal because the copper is a little bit softer, but I can make it work. So got a 1.04 millimeter diameter on that, and then the pin is 1.04 as well. So it's exactly the right size. Um, I just got to be a little bit more careful when you insert it into the connector that you don't bend it, but I think it should work perfectly and it'll be easy to solder. So I'm gonna straighten out a couple pieces of this and we'll get this uh, soldered in. <laughs> Okay, that should be straight enough. Okay, so the pins did have a shoulder, but basically I'm just gonna go in, I don't know, a couple millimeters, maybe a millimeter and a half. Flux on it there. And I'm using plumbing flux. People are probably gonna lose their minds about that, but I'll just make sure I try to clean off as much as I can afterwards. You're supposed to use electrical flux because this stuff's like highly corrosive and actually cause problems down the road. But I don't have any. Okay, so. Just applying a little bit of heat to the copper wire and then dropping it into the slot. Okay, so just gonna make sure they're nice and straight. I'll cut them off at the height of the other ones. Doesn't have to be super exact because the plugs are kind of forgiving on this. This should be good. Okay, I'm going to clean everything with isopropyl alcohol.
Okay, seems pretty basic, but I'm actually just gonna use WD-40 here. Uh, I mean, it is a water displacer, so it should do the trick just to keep moisture away from this, this part of the board here. Put a very tiny amount. And then at the base of these pins, actually I'll just put it everywhere, and then I'll just soak it up with a towel, or maybe I'll blow it up, blow the excess off. Okay, I'll just give it a light blow, just to. Which is not a cooling. Okay, and then there seems to be. Let's put this back in. So the corrosion seems to be happening the most right where those pins go through. So I'm just going to put a little dielectric grease on the where they go through here. should prevent corrosion, further corrosion there. Push it through. We'll reassemble it. Making sure those pins come through. Okay, I'm just gonna screw it back together and put it back in the machine. Thanks for watching, guys. Just leave a comment or whatever in the description if you uh, have any questions.